Looking to move to Toronto and make a fresh start? Well, moving to Toronto can be a hard decision. I'm Sandra Namato, and if this is your first time on this channel and you want to learn everything about what it's like to work, eat, sleep, live, play in Toronto, make sure you tap the subscribe button and click the bell so you're notified every time we upload a new video. And honestly, we get so many phone calls and emails and texts every single day from people moving here. We just love to help them. So even if you're thinking about moving anywhere in the Toronto or GTA area, make sure you give us a call, shoot us an email, or hit the Calendly link below to book an appointment. Days, nights, weekends, we got your back when you're moving to Toronto. Now let's watch Sandy's journey as she takes steps to make a fresh start in Toronto. I've been in real estate for 15 years, so I know buying a home can be tough. Buying on your own, even tougher. Especially if you're reeling from a divorce like Sandy. Emotionally, after the breakup, it was pretty traumatic. She's looking for a home, but can she afford the luxury she's accustomed to? Say something! Yikes! It's pretty bad. She's used to being a princess. When I divorced, the whole foundation had to be shattered. You know, I have to do it all on my own. It's very difficult to let go. It really is. She won't be doing it alone, but she will be doing it by herself. My name is Sandy. I'm a busy single mom and I teach children. When I'm not working, I'm socializing with my friends, shopping or cooking or going out and doing sports. I got married, had two children, and then my husband and I split up. When we broke up, um, uh, it was a really scary time. I would liken it worse to death in a lot of ways because I'd come from this privileged background and then I'm on my own and uh, I have to find a place to land. I feel a little bit homeless. I was a house owner and now I'm a renter and it is my home, but it's, it's not something that I own. At my age, I just feel like I should own my own place. I've heard Sandra is the best and I'm hoping that she can manage my expectations so that I can find the perfect home for me. Sandy needs a home for her newly divorced life, so I'm going to head over to her rental apartment and find out what she needs. I bought a new home after a divorce. It can be a real emotional challenge. Hi, Sandra. Come on in. This hey. is my living room here. Okay. This is my rental. Your rental. So you don't like it? There are aspects of it that I really like. It's got elements of my old house. I like the fact that it's big. I like the fireplace and a mantle that's very similar to my old home. Uh-oh. Looks like she's having a hard time letting go of the past. Sandy, your old home, is that the benchmark for you? Well, it's what I know. This place is a place where I came to rejuvenate and gain some confidence, and I'm going to need that when I buy a new home. What must you have in a home? For sure, the house has to have three bedrooms, one to accommodate each one of my children. And Sandra, this is my bedroom. What do you do in here? I sleep. Nothing wild in here, eh? Can't say that on TV. Yeah! Don't open it. Oh, oh, no, 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 it's a mess! <laughs> we need a bigger we closet. threw all the junk <laughs> okay. in there. I'm putting that on the top of the list. Okay, so this is my kitchen. What's this all about? This is an old piece from my old house, and this kitchen just doesn't have enough cupboard space, so I have it jammed with cookbooks and utensils. If you could change something, what would it be? More counter space, mm -hmm. more cupboard space. Agreed. This kitchen is tight for a family of three. Sandy has a sizable budget of $750,000, which would make her monthly mortgage around $1,500. But she's looking for a three-bedroom house in an upscale neighborhood like her old hood, where homes regularly sell for over a million. But Sandy won't be alone in her house hunt. I've asked her to put together a support team. All right, guys. I'm bringing in my two good friends, Leslie, who is logical, practical, and smart. My suggestion would be to find a property where you can rent out an aspect of it. That will also allow her to move into a nicer neighborhood. And Mimi, who's bright, bubbly, and positive. She's been the soccer mom. Time for some fun. She should go in buy a house in a fun, pedestrian-friendly area with hot guys. I'm embarrassed by Mimi. <laughs> <laughs> You're single. You are single. Really, the income property makes even more sense because those hot areas are more expensive. And actually, when you get into a pedestrian-friendly neighborhood and all the things that you mentioned in the neighborhood, those lend themselves to having basement apartments or upper-level apartments. So it would be oh, easy to get a renter, mm -hmm. and the income from the rent would be superb. I love this. Great. This is great. Sandy's accustomed to living a high-end lifestyle, and although she has a great budget, she's not going to get her old life back. My challenge is to show her that a downsize doesn't necessarily mean a downgrade. 
So I've chosen three different homes in central Toronto to show Sandy. The first is a beautiful row house in a pedestrian-friendly neighborhood just a five-minute drive from the city's core. It's freshly renovated with high-end finishes and is listed below budget at $729,000. It's a lot of dough for a row house. Sandy's friend Leslie might change her mind when she sees the inside of this home. Say something! <laughs> You look like a doe caught in the headlights there. <laughs> Are you in shock? I'm having di real difficulty with this space, like walking right into your living room. I've always had a house where you come in and there's some more of a formal entrance. Welcome to your new life. Yeah. I have to walk in and it has to feel perfect for me. Sandy can get a little hung up on first impressions. I like the pot lights, but it sure is white in here. You can change that. What do you think of the size? It's kind of small because I have big furniture. Well, I love the hardwood floors. Yeah, they're done. You they're don't done. have to do I them. Don't have to, and, and nice flow. And high ceilings. High ceilings. Gives the illusion of space. Which That's true. So this is the kitchen. I like the colors. Sandy's used to luxury and these finishes are definitely high end. This is quartz. It's more costly than granite. Mm -hmm. And all the designers are using it and I put it in my home. This is a warming drawer at the bottom of the oven? I don't know, let's open it. No, just for pots and pans. Mm -hmm. There's a spider in there too. You guys are into like such minute details. I want you to look at the house and see if you <laughs> like it. I mean, this house is very practical for somebody you moving in on their own. Great cupboard space. There's enough room to put all my stuff in here. Finally, some good feedback. So this is bedroom number three. <laughs> Yikes, this is so tiny. <laughs> oh my God, this isn't even the size of an office. Hey, no house is perfect. <laughs> well, at least it's got a big window. <laughs> now we're seeing the silver lining. <laughs> it's nice. They've really gone top of the line. Not much room for more than one in there. Well, why would you have more than one in the bathroom? What are you into? Why wouldn't you have more than one in the bathroom? <laughs> is this the master? No, this is the second. Well, at least after that little teeny thing, this is much better. Nice window. Looking right at the electrical. But Sandy's sure to like the view from the master. Oh, it's got a nice view, great window. Take a look at the closet. Is it bigger than what you have now? Oh yes, of course it is. The space is good, yeah? This is great. And there's more to see. Well, it's a nice space down here. It's clean, it's bright. Nice bathroom, oh, they've carried great. on the bathroom. It's nice that the bathroom is a four piece because now you can have guests down here. Or because the third bedroom upstairs is so tiny, you could put your daughter down here. And what's that? What's this? This goes outside. Ah, the fact that it has an entrance and a four piece bath, there is also the possibility of making this a rental unit. Options. Options. This practicality, right, is bringing back home. So it would be a small apartment, you'd have to put a kitchenette in, but the fact that it has the bathroom all done will save you time and money. But the big news is that it could bring Sandy $700 a month, which would bring her mortgage down to about $690 a month. This place has more than just her wish list items. Although it's not in her old hood, it's really close to downtown, which could give Sandy a more active of social life. Are you feeling the space? There wasn't the wow factor for me. See, when I walk in, I get the wow factor. As soon as I open that front door, I, I, I was expecting a wow, and you were quiet, and I said, talk, say something. Where do you park? There's no parking here, it's just street parking. No backyard, no driveway. If you don't get a spot in front of your home, then you're hauling groceries for miles. In comparison to my old house, the rooms were much smaller, and there was no backyard, and for safety, there was no parking. So those are pretty large features in a house that, that are compromises. That house was beautifully renovated and even with Sandy's budget, she can't expect more of a wow factor than that. I'm gonna have to show her something with parking and more space because in the end, those features might be more important to her. Coming up, I show Sandy how to bring her mortgage in under 150 bucks. That's significant. But Sandy's home hunt is bringing up some big issues. Okay, okay, what are you feeling? You know, I have to do it all on my own. Recently divorced Sandy is a single mom on a mission to buy a home of her own. I come from this privileged background and then I'm on my own. I just showed her a renovated row house, but the lack of a parking spot was a pretty big deal. This next house I'm about to show Sandy hits everything on her wish list, and it's in her preferred neighborhood. Upmarket Midtown, where she's currently renting. It's listed well below budget at $639.9, and there's a basement apartment. It's 
so warm in here. This is great. Sandy's bringing Mimi, who I hope will help her keep an open mind. There's a fireplace you wanted. It's not wood burning, but it is uh, easy to maintain. Flip a that, switch. That's very true. <laughs> it's got a nice mantelpiece on it, I suppose. What do you think of the space? It's a little small. This room is not as large as what you have, so trying to find that in a city home is going to be challenging. Where would I put all my stuff, though? I just don't know how I'm going to fit it all into that place. You have plenty of room for a hacha buffet, whatever you want. And big ceilings that accommodate a firefighter. <laughs> ceilings. <laughs> I think it's really difficult because she's used to being a princess and then all of a sudden here she's shopping for houses and it's a bit below her. The kitchen's big. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? <laughs> the court floor. That's yeah, soft. Eco-friendly. What do you think of it? It's not my favorite, yeah. but it is eco-friendly and I could live with it. I guess that's progress. Has more counter space than what you have now. And more cupboard space. I don't think it's a wow kitchen, but it has everything that I could sort of live with. I want to see more of the house. Let's all right, well, it. let's check out the backyard. It's so chic. It looks like it's low maintenance. It is, and what I like as a single mom with kids, the tenant doesn't have access because it's completely private. That's a really good point. <laughs> yeah. Come on, let's go see upstairs. All right, okay. Let's go. Great storage, liking that. There are no closets in any of the bedrooms, but they have these storage solutions, and they're great, actually. I like what I have currently better. The storage units were fine. Sandy was, like, really not impressed. But I prefer this over a small closet. I think you have to think of a downsized model. You're used to having it all. And baby, if you want to be downtown, you're going to have to, like, lower your expectations. Here's bedroom number two. The tiny bedrooms were a surprise because I'm used to a little bit bigger. Let's see if Sandy likes the third bedroom. Oh, look, they continued on with the armoire scene in this room. Oh, boy, more closets. It's unfortunate that they didn't put in crown molding around the ceilings. I think that Sandy needs to just step off the pedestal a little bit and be more realistic. Okay, blue, yeah. What are you thinking, Sandy? I'm surprised they don't have any light over the mirrors for makeup in the morning. Now, you can easily add a light there. An electrician would just fish it up and put the light fixture in. Is there another bathroom in the house? Nope. Well, there's one for the tenant. Well, the bottom line is I'm not going to get perfection. That's right. You're learning. Perfection may be out of reach, but meeting Sandy's lifestyle and financial needs is possible. The basement apartment makes this home really affordable, but of course, she's found fault with it. It's pretty bad. Okay, this is not your living space. This is for a tenant. Guess how much money this fetches. $500? $800. With the $639.9 list price, $800 in rental income each month would bring Sandy's mortgage payments down from $948 a month to the teeny tiny grand total of $148. So you could almost be living for free upstairs, just paying your property taxes and utilities. The way this particular suite was designed, it's completely private. This person has no access to your living space, has no access to a, your backyard space either. So when you're gone and the kids are home alone, they're safe. That's, that's significant. Significant? This place hits her entire wish list, plus parking, and that $800 rental will help her live almost mortgage-free. Something's up. It's time for a girl talk. I think that you know this is the right step for you and that you're, you're not afraid of choosing a bad house or anything like that. You're afraid of the responsibilities. You're afraid of not having that extra partner, right? Right. To share the burden of the whole thing. To share the burden. Owning a house is a big, fat, hairy deal. And if I don't make the mortgage payments, there's nobody else to go back on it but me. When I divorced and I found myself advanced in years, single, without anybody in my life, it was earth shattering and the whole foundation had to be shattered so that I could build new from there. And I think that you're struggling with that. You're still holding on to vestiges of your old life and that might be drawing you back into the past when you need to live in the, in the present at least. I know. So that we can get to the future. Okay, yeah, okay, right. what are you feeling? What are you feeling? I don't know. What, what's, yeah. what's up? It's what's scary, on? that's all. Yeah. It just brings back the fact that you know, I have to do it all on my own. It's a big decision, more emotional than I thought it was going to be. There's been a lot of new things that I've had to learn to adjust to. I work with tons of women in Sandy's shoes, and I know that it could get a lot more difficult before it gets better, but I want to show her that her new life could be a lot closer than she thinks. Coming up, what do you think? It's kind of small. It looks like my talk hasn't sunk in. Look at that. I'm just laughing at how ugly the furniture is. So it doesn't get any easier. <laughs> Don't. I'm okay. I'm here for you.
Recently divorced mother of two, Sandy, has $750,000 to spend on her first solo home purchase. I have to walk in and it has to feel perfect for me. I've shown her two properties, but neither meets her impossibly high standards. It's unfortunate that they didn't put in crown moldings. This next house is a condo townhome in an upscale neighborhood. Known for its high-end shops, this is the midtown area Sandy loves. This home has almost everything on her wish list. Four bedrooms, major closet space, and a big kitchen. Even though this place is pushing the budget, I'm convinced that in this area, it's well worth the $750,000 asking price. Let's see if I can get Sandy and her friend Leslie to see the real value of this place. What do you think? Well, it's great. <laughs> it's too beige for you? Yeah. Okay, it's we can change that. So we've got California shutters. Yeah. We've got good light coming in here. Higher ceilings. The floors are lovely. So it doesn't perfect. match but it the doesn't. decor of the kitchen. And this is 1970s oak. Or... Okay, let's focus a little less okay. on decor and decor. let's look at okay. floor plan and functionality and space. It's kind of small. Oh boy, here we go again. Well, let's go check out the kitchen space. Nice granite. Yep. I like the instruments of torture. <laughs> look at that. <laughs> open, it's yeah. got great counter space for you. I think the storage space is a little bit limited for the food and all my pots and pans. And there's extra space here. Well, these doors are pretty dated. I would definitely get some doors to match the kitchen. It is quite expensive. And it's a little surprising with the fact that it is so dated in the decor. And the decor's not that bad. It's, it's a lot of little things that are very distracting. The flooring, the odd doors, the old cabinetry, the lack of lighting. Like even the floor there, it's dated and worn. Maybe Sandy will like the upstairs. So this is, I would call this... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> what are you laughing at? I'm laughing at how ugly the furniture is. But it's just furniture. It's really straight from the 80s. Okay, but your stuff will be in here. The, the 1880s. Not helping. Look at all this closet space. Two double closets. That's great. His and hers are hers and hers. I like all that. Hers. Hers hers. These are way better than what I have in my current place, so yes. it's fantastic. Finally, a positive comment. Oh, gosh. Is that a plastic toilet seat? <laughs> it is. It's a vinyl one. We can change that. Behind the door is the shower. Okay, let's take a look at this. It would be much nicer if it had glass on it, but eh, it's all right. Look at these ceilings. Wow, a great artist space. So this could be for your son or your daughter. Closet over there, great windows. Interesting floor plan, but plenty of room for a bed. Go ahead. Oh, so this one has the vaulted ceiling and a nice window. Yes, sometimes when you have the vaulted ceilings, it's to give you the illusion of space, but this actually has a great floor plan. And at least you can put a bed in these, not a teeny crib. Let's take a look at the basement. Pretty basic, but you could make it nice. Actually, there's potential to rent it out. So this would be living space and bedroom. And over here, kitchen. Oh, small kitchen. Oh, great income potential. Okay, so this is good. Even though it's a bachelor, mm -hmm. because of the location, because there's parking, you would get over $1,000 here. Really? That's amazing. I'll say an extra $1,000 a month in rent means she'd be paying only $4.97 to live here. I showed this house to Sandy because it's got most of her wish list plus parking. She could make some money on the basement and indulge in the lifestyle this upscale neighborhood offers. Can you see yourself living here? Does this does fit this, the bill? Does it fit the bill? It does. Location-wise, this is fabulous. It really doesn't have the wow factor, but the area is great, as you said. Well, I'm kind of confused. It's hard to make a decision at this point. It really is hard. This place was great and the neighborhood's fabulous, and yet it's not up to Sandy's impossibly high standards. Somebody's got to bring this girl back down to earth. So let's look at the three homes I've shown Sandy. The move-in ready, beautifully renovated row house with rental potential, the semi-detached house with the stylish back patio and ready-to-rent income property, and the spacious four-bedroom condo townhouse with great closet space, vaulted ceilings, and a potential bachelor suite. I think Sandy should buy the condo townhouse. With the apartment downstairs, it gives her income potential, and it's a great location. I really like the house with the long staircase. I thought it was really cool. Great for entertaining, having a few drinks on the patio, nice fireplace. I think that way she attract the most guys. Sandy, we've looked at three houses. How are you feeling about them? 
Well, I'm not feeling really great about any of them. Like, what is available on the market now is is significantly different from where I was, and, and I'm you're struggling just, with I'm that. I'm struggling with that. I'm, I really, it's a real challenge for me. Those compromises are huge. It seems to me like you're having a really hard time picturing yourself in your new life. To a degree, maybe I am hanging on to that a little bit and hoping that I can rebuild that life in the same way, but I see that it's a, there are huge compromises that I'm going to have to make. Whatever those things are, I want to help you to be able to wrap your head around them so that you can embrace your new life. And I understand, it's very difficult to let go. It really is. I had to do it. It takes a long time. And on top of it, you've got the two kids to consider. They're the most important thing to me. And, you know, I really, sorry, I don't want to, don't. I'm okay, I'm here for you. I'm here for you. I know. Coming up, it's decision time for Sandy. My client Sandy is having a tough time moving on from her old life. She wants to buy a home for herself and her two kids. I've shown her three houses that would all ground her new life as a single mom. The renovated row house, a three-bedroom gem that wouldn't require any renos, the semi-detached house with the ready-to-rent income property, and the spacious four-bedroom condo townhouse with the vaulted ceilings. So which home will Sandy choose? So do you know where you have to go from here then? Sandra, I think I really do. I know what decision I'm going to make. Good. I do, too. She could have. You never know. She yeah. could have. Hey. <laughs> Hi, Hi, Evie. Hi, Leslie. So, what's How, the news? What's happening? Well, I'm not going to buy a house. I just couldn't make the decision right now. It's not the right time for me. Really? Why? Why not? I'm just not, I'm just not there yet. They were great houses, but I think she's just not in the right headspace. I think it's just too early for her. She needs to do a little bit more work on herself. It'll come together later. When you're ready, you'll do it. And you know what? When you're ready, I'm ready. Thank you. That's and great. I'm sure they'll be ready too. I feel kind of disappointed that I didn't buy a place, but in my heart, I just feel that I'm really not ready to make that decision. Sandy realized that to take something on this big, you have to be ready, and she can't afford any more regrets. When she's able to begin looking forward to her new life, it'll all become clear, and Sandy will be able to do this by herself. With Sandy, I think there's still a few too many things up in the air for her. I think until Sandy realizes that she's on her own and really truly accepts that, she's not going to be able to move forward. My previous home has factored into my decision right now, but I know that in the future I will buy a home and it'll be the right decision then. For more information about this show, please visit hgtv.ca. If you're getting ready to move in or around Toronto, please reach out to me with the information in the description below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to keep up to date with new videos. See ya!